This is Twit. We've talked a lot about the surprisingly daunting challenge of booting a computer while maintaining true provable security. But this really should not be that surprising. When you think about it, the reason computers have been such an incredible breakthrough and boon for mankind is that they are so flexible. You know, it's a machine that follows instructions. The trouble arises because there's no way for it to know whose instructions it's following. It doesn't care. Um, and it that, you know, its limitless vulnerability arises from its incredible flexibility. And in security, we have this concept of a chain of trust where that chain is anchored by a root of trust. And this applies to booting up an operating system. If the operating system is signed by its publisher, any single bit that's changed will break the signature, which is just a, which is just a, my goodness, which is just a signed hash. So the theory is the system's firmware simply needs to load the code that's been signed and then verify the operating system's cryptographically secure signature before it turns control over to it. Doing that will prevent anyone from modifying the operating system's code. You know, not one bit can be changed because the, the, the code gets hashed and signed and a bit will completely change the hash, which, Leo, is why you and I only check the first four digits, the first and last four digits. It's like impossible for the like, majority of them to be changed. In fact, we know if you change one bit, on average, f half of the bits in the hash will be changed. So that's our strategy. Anyway, so the concept is good. But the question is, if the UEFI is performing that work, who's making sure that it's doing it right? On one hand, having the system's startup firmware code being firm and not hard creates a vulnerability because that means it can be altered. On the other hand, since we appear to be unable to get it right, if it's firm, it can at least be improved when problems with it are inevitably found, as they have in this case been. So the good news is there are people who are focused upon improving the situation with firmware. At the beginning of last month, a group of researchers from the firmware protection company Binarly discovered a raft of critical vulnerabilities in the so-called inside H2O, and that's I-N-S-Y-D-E, inside H2O, UEFI firmware. Um, it is a cross-vendor firmware uh, used by many computer vendors, including Fujitsu, Intel, AMD, Lenovo, Dell, Asus, HP, Siemens, Microsoft, and Acer. So, like, right, that's, <laughs> like, who doesn't use them? Um, and so, and actually, I think that's a good I, that, that that that's a good thing. Binarly found twenty three flaws in this inside H two O UEFI firmware kit, essentially. Most of them occurring in the software's system management mode code, which provides the system wide functions such as power management and hardware control. Since the system management mode privileges inherently exceed those of the OS kernel, which it is responsible for booting, any security issues there can have severe consequences for the vulnerable system. The flaws that were found in this inside H2O firmware can collectively and you know individually be used to invalidate many hardware security features, including Secure Boot and Intel's Boot Guard, to install permanent and persistent software that cannot be easily erased, and to create backdoors and back-channel communications to steal sensitive data. You know, as, as we've talked about this whole, this baseboard processing now, there is there's a whole processor separate from the Intel chip that we stick in a socket when we decide, you know, which model that we want that runs the motherboard and all of its things. And it's very capable. 
So as I said, there were 23 flaws found, with three of them obtaining CVSS scores of 9.8. So this is in the in the you know in the the baseband processing firmware. Binary's disclosure report explained that the root cause of the problem was found in, as I mentioned at the top of the show, the reference code associated with inside H2O's firmware framework. In other words, as we've seen before in other contexts, all the manufacturers derived their own firmware from Inside's firmware SDK reference code to develop their customized UEFI firmware. And, you know, that's certainly reasonable. They bought a license to do so. That's what they did. Uh, no reason to recreate the wheel. The chances are when you do, you're going to make mistakes. So that's great. And so, frankly, I'd rather have everyone working from a common code base than each rolling their own, since getting this exactly right is crucially important. And when it's fixed for one, it's fixed for all. Inside Software has released firmware updates to fix all the security vulnerabilities that were identified by Binary, and they published detailed bulletins to assign severity and descriptions for each flaw. So all of the people using their kit, hopefully there are engineers right now that have been like going, you know, working through this and working to update the firmware across all their products. Of course, we always have the problem of, you know, this in, in, the inside UFI stuff having been around for a long time and products going out of support and no longer receiving firmware updates. It's, you know, it's difficult to require everybody to support everything forever. So they're, you know, these are really bad and now they're becoming known. So, uh, uh, being individually, individually customized firmware on a per product and per manufacturer basis, they all have to be created, adopted, incorporated, you know, downloaded, installed, uh, Every single vendor needs to do this. And that way, it's a little bit like the log for j mess, where, you know, the, it, it is something core to many different products uh, and, and publishers. So this is why I said at the top, we can expect to see important firmware updates coming from many of our hardware vendors. And I'm not suggesting that this will be a widespread attack. Uh, or that that will result, it's very likely that these would be used, you know, these, these are going to be sophisticated, targeted attacks. You need to get onto the system first, then these are being used to achieve persistence, you know, getting down into the firmware. So I, I did not look in detail to see what three of these things had a 9.8, but it is possible that this could be exploited remotely because... There, there is now uh, management technology in some of these motherboards, which allows, you know, re re remote over the network management of them. So that may be why they're at 9.8. Still, it just makes sense to keep your firmware updated. And then in addition to this, on top of these 23 problems, last week HP disclosed an additional 16 high-impact UEFI firmware vulnerabilities that Binary had found which affect multiple HP models. And HP is, you know, a user of Inside <clears throat> also. And that included laptops, desktop computers, point-of-sale systems, and uh, edge computing tools. These flaws allow malware to survive hard drive replacement and operating system reinstallation. So anyway, a long time ago, we talked about how rootkits are able to hide in plain sight by doing something as simple as hooking an operating system's directory listing API to simply remove references to any of its own files from the list. You know, so you do a dir. Uh, or any of your programs do a dir, and they don't see 
any of the files that are sitting in the directory right in front of them. I remember it was it was the Sony rootkit that we talked about in the yeah, back right. <laughs> way long time ago. And it's just unnerving just to imagine that something that simple, you know, I mean, it just it shows how much we assume that our operating system is doing what we expect and and what it should where the, in in fact as i said because software is infinitely infinitely flexible it's so easy for it not to be working the way we want it to so anyway I, you know uh keep an eye on firmware updates and a, a huge thanks to binarily for digging in to taking the time to dig into inside uefi offerings uh and you know and, and help make our stuff better this seems like UEFI be a really uh, good vector for attacks because it's basically a mini operating system that runs before your system. So yep. and it's uh, persistent as you it, point it out. It has a file system? Yeah. They can do anything. Yeah. It's Turing complete. I mean, it's a C, it's written in C and it's it's basically if I were going to be a bad guy, <laughs> that would be the best place to put malware because it would survive yeah. a uh, um reinstall and everything wouldn't survive it yeah it usually lives on the hard drive right it would, would not survive a complete nuke of the hard drive no no it, it's in it's the in the firmware firmware yes i you know for yes. there's a uefi partition though on the drive that also contains code yes and so so that could be a problem <laughs> although these guys specifically said this that this the, would th th this would survive a hard drive replacement oh all right so it is in the firmware wow yeah. yeah. Wow. 